But notice though that you could go in the reverse direction. Suppose I had started Maybe we should do this. So let's say we have that this is plus 0.15 molar. Let's see if we can figure out all the other changes. So if this is plus 0.15 molar, what does that tell us about the other changes? So we need, it means that we need um, one multiplied by 0.15 molars, um, and it's going to give us a um, molarity of calcium 3 mm -hmm. for 2. And, uh, also, uh, from that, we can find that. Let's try working this out on paper. Okay, now that this is a little bit more confusing, so let's go through that more slowly. So first of all, um, erase everything except for this number. Let's just have this number. So here's the only number that we have. Okay, so here's the only number that we have. So that would be, so uh, now I want to figure out this. Is it one third multiplied by 0.15? Yeah, that would because be better. Because we get one per, I mean, right. three calcium um, ions per one. Yeah, that would be and better. And then this one is going to be one uh, half. That, this one is harder. Um, but yeah, so, so let's calculate this. Let's calculate this. Now, one thing I think you might have missed so far is notice how I put a plus here. Oh. So what would be the change on this side? Minus. Right. All right, now I think the simplest way to think about this, the simplest way to think about this is to say to yourself, um, this number is one-third of this number. Mm -hmm. So this number should be one-third of this number. So this should be one-third of 0.15, which is 0.05. Mm -hmm. So you got that correct. Let's show how to do that a little bit more carefully, though, using a unit conversion. So if I was going to do unit conversion, what would be my target units? If I want to figure this out, that one is yeah, molarity, it would be molarity of calcium phosphate. Now, what should be my starting units? It's going to be three, um, I mean, it's calcium uh, two iron, like 0.15. What should I write down as my starting units? Yeah, 0.15 molar calcium ion is our start, starting information. 0.15 molar calcium ion is our starting information. And now we need to write a conversion ratio.
So what should I write here? Point one. Point one, and the answer would be? Molars. Molars. And the change, what would the sign be? No, plus. It's always important to put the signs in for the changes. Um, and then the minus here would have been minus 0. 0.05. Yeah, but like, uh, we can still find, like, if we'll find the, this, like, first time I found P04 by finding, like, first I found this, and then I, from here, I found a PO4, and it gave me the same number. Oh, I didn't realize that you had gotten that right. So you were just doubling this. Yeah. Okay. I just did Actually, I, I thought you were making a mistake, but now I can see you're doing it right. Okay, that's right. So it's pretty easy to go from here to here because mm -hmm. this coefficient is double this mm -hmm. one. Going from here to here directly is more tricky. That's where it's really helpful to use the conversion mm -hmm. ratio. Okay, good. Okay, so some of these I think you should be able to do without the conversion ratio. It's very thankful. I think it should be obvious that to go from here to here, you should divide by three. Yeah. I think it should be obvious that to go from here to here, you divide by 3. And I think it should be obvious that to go from here to here, you can multiply by 2. Mm -hmm. But if you wanted to go between these two, it's kind of confusing, because they both have coefficients. So that's where it's, I think, really helpful to use the conversion ratio approach. Okay. All right. So um, like I said, if it's obvious, you don't need to write down the conversion ratios. You can just write these in. But if it's not obvious, you should put that in. Um, so let's try one more example. This I think we can probably do without the conversion ratios. If this is minus x, what would this be? It's going to be plus x. Uh, 3x plus 3x. And plus 2x. Okay. Good. Put our That's right. In front of okay. So the important thing is we can't assume that all the changes are the same. Mm -hmm. You can't assume that all the changes are the same unless all the coefficients are mm -hmm. the same. And once you know one of the changes, you can always figure out the other changes okay. using the stoichiometric coefficients. This method only works for the change row. It doesn't work for the initial row or the end row. You have to figure those numbers out some other way. This method only works for the change row. Okay, so that's a good start. Why didn't we have to talk about this when we were working with acids and bases? We didn't have to talk about this for acids and bases because the coefficients in acid-base reactions are almost always ones. Mm -hmm. All the coefficients were ones, so all the changes were the same. Um, but they don't have to be ones for solubility reactions, so here we have to be more careful. Good. Oh, and this reminds me of one more thing I wanted to mention. So remember how here the Q is equal to calcium 2 plus times phosphate 3 minus. So this would be cubed and this would be squared. All right. Now remember I said that you should always write these as dissolutions. You shouldn't write them as precipitations. Um, why not? What would go wrong here if you wrote this equation like this? 3 calcium 2 plus plus 2 phosphate 3 minus forms calcium 3 PO4 2 solid. This is the way I told you not to write it. Why, why should you not write it this way? Because now the Q is really weird. Because now you would have a 1 on the top, because this represents a 1. And then you would have the calcium 2 plus cube and the phosphate uh, 3 minus squared. This just looks like a really weird Q that we're not okay. used to working with in this class. And this is not what the KSPs are designed to work with. Um, so this is the reason why you should not put the AQ on the left, because it gives you a weird Q that doesn't match the KSPs in the book. Okay. So it's always better to write the solid on the left and the aqueous on the right. Okay. There's nothing wrong about this. You could solve the problem this way, but it would be harder. So it's better to stick with solid on the left and AQ on the right.